piece in from the black holes of Dakota Toritary, United States of Advertising. Stan Jibalisco here with take two in the Math Free AC sequence, which I am attempting to present to you so that you can get ready for alternating current circuit theory. I always like to call it circuit theory. Alternating current circuit theory which does involve mathematics. Now, I've been into uh, how important mathematics really is for a total understanding and that math really should come first and then the study of the alternating current phenomena second once you're armed with the necessary weapons in order to deal with that kind of highfalutin stuff. But I was asked to try present an alternating current circuit series sequence, basic concepts without any mathematics. So here goes take number two. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to turn on your imagination switch. Turn off all the other switches. Get away from all the other stimuli that this society has to <clears throat> offer. Get away from them. Shut yourself up in a dark room or something and imagine yourself standing on a vast, flat field, like you might find in the East River part of Dakota Territory. At night, imagine yourself armed with a 10 or 15 foot length of string and a rubber ball on the end of that string that glows in the dark. And you've shown some light on that rubber ball so it's nice and has that phosphorescent green glow. And then you swing that ball around your head at the end of the string so that it creates a constant, uniform, horizontal, circular motion. As viewed from above, that circular motion would look like this. Constant angular speed, meaning the same number of revolutions per minute all the time. Now imagine someone standing quite a ways away, maybe 60, 70 yards, 55, 65 meters away from you. And imagine it's totally dark except for that rubber ball moving back and forth. And that's what you're going to see because you're looking at the circle edge on, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. It's going to move most rapidly near the center of its position, that is when the ball is either between you and the observer, or you are between the ball and the observer, and the slowest speeds will occur at the reversals when the ball, you, and the observer form the vertices of a long right triangle. So I'm trying to get away from math, but I don't think that's getting too mathematical. Just imagine the way that it would look. You can imagine what it would look like. It's oscillating back and forth. Now imagine that you take that motion, S suppose you lie down or you have your observer lie down in the field so that instead of a horizontal oscillation, that person sees a vertical oscillation. Vertical ground, horizontal U, vertical rubber ball oscillation seen edge on, perfectly uniform circular motion. And now let's add a dimension to that little bit of imagination and suppose that you start walking at a constant speed in one direction while you do this with the rubber ball. Well, that, now that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Let's suppose that your observer instead gradually turns her head, or in other words, adds a time axis to a graph so that this up and down and up and down becomes an up and down that moves at a constant rate towards the right. That ball then is going to follow a path that looks like a wave. And that wave, if the ball is moving in a perfectly circular path, perfectly horizontal or vertical as your observer may see, at a constant speed, and the motion towards the right is at a constant speed, probably down but it looks like it's towards the right from the observer's point of view. You're going to, the observer is going to see this wave 
formed by the motion of that green glow through the dark. That wave is called a sine wave or a sinusoid. Sine wave, S-I-N-E, or sinusoid, S-I-N-O-S-O-I-D, sinusoid, S. Oh, you know the drill. Look it up. <laughs> I'm still a little stoned from all these painkillers. You know, I got a cut in my abdomen about the length of a, well, not as long as a football field, but almost. That's what it feels like anyway. And I'm stoned still, but I am, you know, you don't need so much, uh, so much common sense and alertness to make YouTube videos. If you watch very many of mine, you already know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, but I think I'm explaining this in pretty good intuitive terms. That is a sine wave being traced through space. In electronic terms, that sine wave is what the alternating current from your wall outlet would look like, ideally, or when any uh, alternating current bundle of energy is all concentrated at a single frequency. All of the energy is concentrated at 60 hertz, 60 cycles per second hertz, my, my, my patootie. Or in many parts of the world, 50 hertz. My amateur radio transmitter might put out a signal at 14 million and 57 hertz, 14.057 megahertz but it would be a sine wave. That's what the signal would look like if you graphed it out on an oscilloscope, which the old-fashioned kind do have that green trace. But it moves along fast enough and there's a persistence on the screen so that you can see that sine wave. The sine wave is unique and perfect because it is a special representation of perfectly uniform circular motion which translates, in qualitative terms, into a bundle of energy that's concentrated entirely at a single frequency. That is the ideal alternating current wave. So that's lecture number two, take number two, about alternating current. In the real world, of course, you never find a perfect sine wave. They may look perfect, but there's always just enough imperfection in them that they contain components and elements of energy at frequencies other than the one intended. 60 hertz, 50 cycles per second, 14 million and 57 cycles per second, or whatever. But it's always alternating current, and it's perfect if it goes just as far above the axis in your graph as it does below and it maintains that consistent, uniform, perfect-looking sine wave pattern. That is your ideal alternating current wave. You follow that? I think you probably could. I couldn't, <laughs> but I hope you can. Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations, in case it interests you. Coming at you from the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Advertising, or should I say, now, going away from you. Because I'm about to sign off, say so long for now, and peace out. Till next time.